Hello and welcome to Silence, a podcast that gives women a chance to get honest and open about what it's really like surviving and thriving in what often feels like a male-dominated world. All of my guests have been handpicked from the fields of science, technology, engineering and maths, or STEM, where inclusivity and diversity can be a real issue. I know this only too well, having been a mechanical engineer myself for a number of years. I'm Dr. Shanice O'Mara, now a television broadcaster. I've worked on and reported on some cutting edge technology and innovation over the years. And through my TV work, I've met some incredibly inspiring women from a diverse range of STEM fields. These women are true trailblazers. And I've often felt so empowered myself by learning what they're like as real people, usually when the TV cameras have been turned off and they're just being themselves. Each week on Silence, one of these women shares her unique experiences and truth without the usual pressure and stress of having to promote her accomplishments or uphold her impressive reputation. How? Because all of my guests are deliberately kept anonymous and disguised to ensure that we as listeners are not distracted or maybe even intimidated by all the usual kinds of societal labels and trophies. The women of STEM on this show have amazingly impressive CVs, but most importantly, they're human, just like the rest of us. And I want to share the inspiration and wisdom that I've gathered from them with you. It's my hope that you really relate to what we chat about today. If so, please do subscribe to Silence and maybe even rate and review the show. I'd love to have your feedback. This week, my guest is in the field of data science and artificial intelligence applied to biomedicine. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's really nice to have you on the show. Um, I must say your your field was a bit of a mouthful. That's a lot of science. What does it mean? That's a great question. It, it, it is a mouthful. And, and, and there's a lot of ways to describe it. There's so many people in the industry that give it so, you know, so many different labels. Um, mm. There's the label of precision medicine. You may have heard of that. Um, no, actually. And before there was, um, you know, there was a sort of a hype on big data for healthcare, and now there is a hype of artificial intelligence in in healthcare as well. I mean, it, it really uh, artificial intelligence, data science, big data, all of those all of those fields have been around forever. I mean, there's there's nothing new around machines and computing science helping us make decisions. Um, right. You know, even an MRI, uh, an MRI scan, and an MRI machine is, is is similar to that. But but for some reason, when you apply it to decisions about um, what a drug treatment a medicine is going to do for a patient, it just becomes um, harder to believe, harder to to trust, and and it's a very controversial field. So um, what it means really is nothing more than the convergence of uh, biomedical data, meaning clinical and molecular data about diseases and drugs, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and used with uh, the highest, the uh, latest technology of computing science to help us understand better who and how uh, is going to respond to a particular drug treatment, a, a medicine. And and this is, I mean, we know that that, that that there's been many revolutions in humankind with regards to science and 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 with regards to medicine and curing disease, um, but we are really at the cusp of of one of these massive revolutions where computing science starts to help the human brain to understand things about biology and about diseases and about how the body responds to any treatment, drug treatment, that was never possible before. Um, and and this, is, this is a fascinating field. The promise, the ultimate promise is the following. Every single person that, get, that has a disease, who has a disease, which is almost you know, every single one of us, unfortunately, are going to suffer from one or other maladies. And any single person will get treated with, with what will definitely be known as working for them Mm -hmm. and and you know we know these uh, diseases in general even though they have all a label they are not always the same genetically we are all different Mm -hmm. and genetically we all respond differently as well to treatment so the promise is that we will be able to use data clinical and molecular data to its maximum so that every single person gets 
only the treatment that will work for them, mm. known a priori. And that is a very, very big promise and this fantastic promise. And it's a, it's a promise that also allows humankind to discover cures to diseases that we don't even know today and, and, and to discover more of biology that we don't understand today. So it's, it, it's a huge promise. Yeah. Um, it, it is still very much in it, its inception, but it's a, it's a great field to, to be in. It's not for the faint-hearted, but it's a great field. So if we were to break it down then um, and just look at data science, how is that collected? You know, when you're administering drugs, chemicals to patients to cure them, where does the data collection start? Data can be present all across um, a lifetime of a disease. So it could be present when you are not yet sick and, and, and you're still, um, you know, in a, in, in a sort of pre-diagnosis state. And there could be data about signs and signals in your, in your body, symptoms, let's say, that could point towards a potential um, a potential disease, a potential diagnosis of, of, of a particular condition. So um, typically this is very difficult because the data comes from the patient and the patient is the one that expresses right. a certain type of discomfort. And this typically used to be just, you know, anyone like you and I just visiting our, our, our physician and expressing yeah. a, a problem. So nowadays um, in this, in this space, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of um, technology that, that is out there that can collect um, signs of so sensors and things like yeah, that. Exactly. So sensors and, you know, there's, there's a lot of what they, it's called in the industry it's called wearables and, and you can have a Fitbit, you can have a, you know, any kind of device, you can have a, an EKG, uh, machine on the back of, of or, or sensor on the back of your own mobile phone that is testing mm. how your heart is behaving you have also you know your if you're if you're unfortunately diabetic you you prickle your finger and then that blood um test goes straight to a little computer that gets right. you know, drops on all your data so that's that's a way where data comes comes from i but, mean that's the whole technology sector in itself isn't it it's completely, completely. This is digital and wearables and, and digital uh, diagnosis and, and wearables. And that's that's one aspect of the industry. I think, you know, there, there's, there are so many emerging, though. There are so many emerging. Hospitals keep what, what is called patient longitudinal records, uh, which is typically, you know, now translated into, you know, manual records to electronic records, electronic medical records. And and typically a patient that lands in a in a in a in a treatment center will have a, a record uh, assigned to them, uh, associated to them. And that's a, that's another place where, where data kind of stem from. I mean the latest really and the most sort of um, advanced I would say is when um, God forbid you end up having a biopsy because there's a sus- suspicion of, a, of 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 some sort of a, you know um, some sort of cancer or 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 or, or a, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, typically cancer, and then and then you get the biopsy, and then your your the genetic code of that cancer of that tumor is sequenced through um, through very you know advanced technologies called next generation sequencing, and uh, basically all the variants, the genetical variants that are detected in your own tumor are are coded and classified and detected, and that get, can be read by very advanced systems, and uh, they can provide a lot of information about why and how you know what is driving your 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 particular cancer, and 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 what is what is it that potentially could support um, the cure of that, or at least you know some stopping the progression of it, and that's that. You know that's a very advanced type of data that comes out of of of, of this next generation sequencing, and there's a there's a massive industry around it. There's the laboratories that that can perform the tests. There are the the data companies that can understand the data and translate the data to meaningful terms, clinical terms for the physician, and you know so on and so forth. So data can really be around for for you know from many sources, and and there's something called. Prompts, which is patient 
um, reported outcomes metrics where a patient can typically report back through different gadgets, different tools online, online tools, what's going on for them in their condition. And, and, and all that data can be swallowed by these computing systems Gosh. and can try to understand. So it's a very, it's an exploding field and it's yeah. a bit of an ongoing field as well. It just sounds like, you know, we now have the technology to store all this information. Um, and collect all this information. I mean, you know, just uh, there seems to be so many different technologies that need to come together to make this possible. How does artificial intelligence then come into it? Yeah, no, that's that's the fascinating part. That is when it really gets very, very clever. So, um, artific- I mean, let's, let's not forget what artificial intelligence means. Um, artificial intelligence is nothing more than a than software, a computer, um, teaching itself to think and have an opinion on a, on a topic. I mean, this is this is this is really you know the the, the cost of artificial intelligence. And and what it needs is um, its data, and then an algorithm, an algorithm to to play with that data, to interpret the data, and to spit out insights about that data, what the data is saying. So. When it comes to artificial intelligence, I mean the, the 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 best the best example I can give in this particular field is following. Imagine a doctor, a doctor who, you know, has studied you know their five or seven years of medical school and have you know gone through all of these you know difficult tests of you know so much information to to ingest and to digest and to and to then apply to patient cases, right? So that is, you know, at the best doctors in the world that can get the perfect notes and, you know, scores, in, you know, great. They're, they're, they're fantastic and they're coveted. But they will never, unfortunately, the human brain will never be able to ingest, you know, the millions and millions of, of, of medical publications, for example, that, that, that exist in the world about any particular condition. I mean, this is just impossible. And especially for any particular decision that, 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 that a doctor has to make about a patient, it is, it is just physically and humanly impossible for them to go through all the data available that suggests some sort of evidence about what's going to work in that patient or not. So if you have a computer um, that can ingest the data and that can support your own human judgment about what would be best for your patient, then that computer using all that data and and those algorithms to interpret the data can help you uh, and can guide you through your decision. So artificial intelligence comes in, in, in a way as an augmentation of what the human brain could ever look at, digest, ingest, and interpret. And that's that's where it's just honestly essential. Yeah. Um, it's just now that we're able to use it, but it's essential for these crucial decisions because you're deciding on someone's life. Right. It's not just a you know not a vain decision. Yeah. How on earth did you get into this field? I mean, it just sounds so advanced. Um, you know, when you were a little girl, did you always dream of going into something involving healthcare? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, a, again, another great question. Um, I always I always had a, 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 um, an inclination to be in a field where I could... I could do something revolutionary where I could bring the most advanced thinking processes, technology, whatever, to 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 help radically um, the status quo. I mean, this this has always been at the core of of, of what I like and what I'm inspired mm-hmm. by. Let's put it that way. Um, I I you know as I as I advance in my career, I was always fascinated by by completely you know out of the box uh, orthogonal business models where you could um, again just break the mold. That's that that's what's really like. I, I, that's what I really have always liked. And 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 I guess I just you know I at some point in my life um, back to my personal history. I I experienced um, what healthcare, um, you know, good doctor could 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 do for you. A good 
how the healthcare system could do for you and how transformational that can be for for either a human being or a family or in any nucleus in society. Mm-hmm. And I just felt um, that the, the, this is the most kind um, um, part of the professional world. And I just, I just really wanted to, yeah, I really wanted to help. Right. <laughs> I really wanted to get there. And I, and, and, and that's where, you know, that's what drove me to healthcare. That's what drove me to healthcare. It's so amazing because, you know, you, what you do just sounds so incredibly advanced and pioneering and cutting edge. By contrast, then, what kind of kid were you like? I mean, were you always fixing things, coming up with new ideas? Like, were you were you innovative from your early days? I mean, I, I just don't know how... I'm trying to imagine how a little girl makes a jump into something so advanced. Um you know, were there signs when you were little that you'd end up having a life in biomedicine? You know, that's 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 the best question ever. Um, yeah, I had always, I always had like two very very strong forces playing in me. So on the one hand, I had my parents. My mom is a biochemist. Oh wow! And and my dad is a chemical engineer. Ah. So I always had this, you know, household and this world when I was growing up when, you know, these very, very scientific minds were raising me, of course, and and they they took nothing for granted. They were just super scientific and they were always, if there was no evidence, I couldn't speak about it. I Like I would lose my grounds. It, the minute I would say it and had no almost like a scientific approach and like an evidence I could, I could, I could, I could propose. So it, it, you know, in a way it was a very intellectual game growing up because I needed to, you know, I was not nothing, but, you know, when I was a little girl, I was of course, you know, had no profession. So I was just a little girl and I needed to find my way around my life, you know, finding, you know, whatever I would like to do, you know, to, to have some sort of scientific grounds on things. And that was, that was very interesting. And that definitely marked me, definitely was a very, very strong, um, I would say influence on me. It had a very strong influence on me, and 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 separately, I also was a very, or I, I am actually a very um, intuitive woman, and I, I'm, I'm I'm very moved, and I've always been very moved uh, by by kindness, by by just human kindness. You know, people showing you their their best in a very altruistic fashion, very you know selfless way. Um, totally no egotistical and and I just thought you know always you know these these kind gestures that I received in several ways from 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 people that when I least expected it um I just I just they just really moved me and so I had these very you know different worlds because my definitely my world growing up was not moved by kindness it was moved by rationalization you know rationalizing mm-hmm. you know arg- and, and, and making a, a very very intelligent strong argument for your case and that was very different and I remember I mean I remember when I did all my vocational tests I don't know if you you know I, I grew up in in, in 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 Latin America and 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 it's there's there was a vocational test that you would take to see where you more you where you would go you where would you do better mm. and I was always Scoring really high in chemistry, mathematics, um, physics, and and you know these biology. These were the the the, the subjects I was I was suggested mm. to to follow. You know, and I always was like, no, I want business. No, I want business. No, I want business. Why? I don't think it was the, the, uh, there was something about me. You know, I. I was following a lot of stories, right? A lot of a lot of stories on 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 who were who which kind which kind of people were able to to just turn turn the world upside down and and bring a massive difference to the world. And and I just I always realized that it was never the scientists. No offense at all to the scientists. What to your parents? It was always, yeah, I mean, well, my parents, my parents, you know, stayed in, and I would say, I mean, they 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 did amazingly well in in their own in their own space, of course. But you know, they they just didn't didn't get the you know you know let's democratize this, the, let's bring things to the masses, and I was fascinated by that, and I just I just felt that you know the people that were able to to do that were 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 the ones that that I don't know that in the end really changed things. 
and and I just I just thought you know why why can't I just merge the the, the, the why can't I just merge both worlds? And I just felt, okay, I understand science. I, you know, my, my, my mother used to take me to, 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 to her lab. I mean, she's been in academic research all her life and she has two uh, PhDs and one postdoc and two postdocs. Oh my gosh. Or I mean, she's, she's, she's like an eminence in science. Right. And, and I just, you know, and she, from the, from, from, you know, from, from when I was very little, she would take me to the lab. I would just understand, you know, she would, she would, she would explain to me her experiments as if I would understood. And, and, and I actually learned English. Um, well, I learned to read and write in English quite, you know, from early state, early age. I mean, even, even, but, but even better than I used to <laughs> read and write in my own language. So native language. So she, when I was 15 years old, she asked me to help her um, just, just you know, write one of her journal submissions to a scientific oh, wow. journal, and she would have to explain to me mm-hmm. all the experiment, and and you know, I would have to just understand some of the terms, you know, and I would just have to start writing, and 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 you know, I was happy to do it, and I, I remember at school I was a bit of a weird kid because you know people were talking about their pets at school, like cats and dogs, that kind of normal thing, and my pets were actually scorpions that my mother had, you know, some of my 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 mother's fellows. Had had um, it, you know had made innocuous in in the lab because they were studying an antidote for cod dead uh, for babies. Oh, wow. you, know, even by, you know, so, so I was just like you know the one like oh what kind of pet do you have like oh I have a Scorpius <laughs> and they call these and I'm like, like what on earth is wrong with this woman? So, <laughs> so I was always a little bit like what did you do yesterday? Oh I just helped my mom kill some lab rats for and extract the hypothalamus from the brain. <laughs> like oh. What? Wow. <laughs> so so you know, I was I was really not not very um shy mm. of any of these. And probably not intimidated fire. either. No, not at all. Not at all. Never intimidated by that. I just thought, you know, I can bring the best of both worlds. And and when I decided to do um, business at school, um, I don't know if you've ever heard there was a there's a there's a guy who's called uh, CK Pralad. Who who brought um, very new business models to the third world? Um, it's called bottom of the pyramid. And just how do you adapt first world and you know, capitalism driven business models into the into the third world to actually adapt them properly and help people in completely different economies and completely different social socio economical realities? And I just became fascinated by that. I was like, you know. That's what I really need to learn to do. So I was happy to go the business way, and then and then just but but I wanted to be close to science. So this wow. is wow. I, I mean, it's a perfect marriage, you know. So what's your job like now? Are you happy doing what you're doing? I'm challenged. I'm 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 definitely happy. I am I'm definitely challenged, but I do like the challenge. Um, I was tasked to. I spent after my master's degree. I I I went to proper healthcare through pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical industry and I spent about a decade in the pharmaceutical industry learning all kinds of uh, you know types of jobs in, in in commercial commercial positions and and I and, and afterwards I, I realized you know the the massive explosion of technology as I described at the beginning you know was was too good to be missed so I decided to go into the more entrepreneurial side and there's a lot of companies that are that are that are you know that ha- were emerging and are are you know emerging right now that that help with this you know data mm. decision making data science biomedicine conversion and and I you know I was before I I decide before I wanted to decide on where exactly to go I set up myself as a consultant and there was this uh, I had met a CEO of a company I'm with right now and he said well you know why can you just come and look at my data science technology and tell me how do I enter the bio bio pharma space with it? And I was like, okay, yeah, why not? So I I put together a business plan to do to do so. And then long story short, I was asked to join the company and to actually start applying what I had just created as a business plan. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I, you know, that was about three years ago. And then I just you know, started building a team about around it. 
and they started testing what I had actually written down. <laughs> and and yeah, and I mean, fast forward three years, I am in a position where the business unit that I created is is up and running. It's taken off really nicely. We have produced very interesting artificial intelligence um, technology to help pharmaceutical and biotech companies decide um, better which drugs are going to work on which patients and also which clinical development programs are going to succeed or not. There's billions and billions of dollars lost in, 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 in what's, what's seen as, you know, bad beats or bad bets where where people just don't really know whether something is going to work and 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 then mm. a drug is going to work in it in for t- particular disease type of patients and 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 it's not just the money i mean it's just all the patients that go through the clinical clinical trials and they actually and the clinical trial fails and there's you know the drug doesn't come into market and it's such a blow i mean i don't know if you if you follow this space but a few weeks ago there was a massive failure of a, of a promising drug a monoclonal antibody that was tested for alzheimer's disease and dementia is a, is, is a massive burden in, mm. in in the world from a disease perspective and it's also such a sad story because it, there's no cure for it there's no disease modification available there's only mild symptomatic treatments and this is this is awful so um you know and it, it failed again and, and and the holy grail is really to understand better and faster and sooner what's going to work on whom and and to cure disease and to really stop halt disease or modify disease so so for me i just you know when i started testing my business model in this in this particular company i just was like well i really hope this really helps as many it's not just about making money you know it's it's it, with with the business model that I, that i created but it's also just you know how can i make sure or or at least contribute to patients being put on clinical trials or being given drugs that will more likely work in them than not and that's that for me is the greatest promise and it it's really what keeps me going and what what what, what just makes me wake up and feel excited about my day oh my gosh honestly you sound like a true pioneer i mean someone that is really advancing um the space um even just the very idea that you you partnered um this kind of biomedicine technology with business um but what's it like on a personal level to be this kind of pioneering woman in your industry um it is I'm not going to say it's easy um, because it is challenging. It is, I, I think it's, it's, it's really, um, it's not seen as such. It's, it's, it's somewhat, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, let me, let me describe a, a, a situation, for example, when I, when I, joined this particular company and even when I joined when I joined so there's two particular points in time when I joined pharma for the first time mm-hmm. and I I you know you know I had very good credentials you know I have a an MBA from a very reputable extremely reputable school and and um yeah I mean I, I had a really good curriculum uh, it's not that I was not, you know, it's not that I was someone who was like, you know, why is she here? But actually, yeah. a lot of the people that were, you know, that 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 saw me you know, joining um, this really big pharma company in in Switzerland were like, you know, hang on a second, but you have no scientific background. Like, you, you what is your degree? Well, it's not scientific, right? So, you know, you're not going to make it here. Let me just tell you, I mean, and let me just save you the prop, the trouble. You're just mm. not going to make it. And there was a lot of, a lot of, there were a lot of people who were just not believing that, you know, that I would be worthy of it or that I would do, I, I would actually thrive in it. And, and, and so it became some sort of, you know, personal, crusade of like oh well you know I, I will prove them wrong <laughs> you know I, I know a lot about you know different business disciplines that really matter to what you're doing and of course I have a I have an uphill learning curve on on a lot of things that I that 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 probably you know are new to me 
but it that's I was not shy to I was just not you know it was a challenge but I, I I was ready for the challenge I was like okay I'm fine I learned what I need to learn and and so I did so it but I'm not gonna lie that that those you know people who were not you know believing or were not giving me the 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 the, the credibility or or the the hope that I would make it well um didn't 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 you know hurt or mm. didn't didn't have a have yeah. an impact on me of course it had an impact on me you know and 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 it's it's in in a way you know there, there's you can either go on the resilient side and then become this like you know fighter and you're like okay i'll prove Aggressive. you wrong or yeah. yeah or you can go into the okay you know i i you know they must have you know there's a reason why they say that so i probably it's not it's not for me and then you can desist you can you can quit um i didn't i'm not a quitter and i and i you know i just decided to 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 just you know go on and and, and make sure that i would do my best and and all i all i had is my best right, right? and you know and not, now in this job in this this latest job where you know i have I increasingly every time i have changed companies or have moved on from job to another I have made massive jumps. You know, this is this is something that I'm not not afraid to say because it's it's factual. You know, every time I've moved on, you know, my jobs have changed in in, in you know, it's been a leapfrog. And and it means that someone some somewhere out there has noticed potential in me and has gone like, "Okay, let's give her a big shot." And I have taken it very gladly and I have then proved them right. Um, but but that's not to say that you know for this the same at the same time as someone has actually believed in me, um, another you know <laughs> several other few people have actually said uh, how why why is she there, and and I mean in this 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 role that I have now it's it's a pretty senior role and and some sometimes it doesn't help that I, you know, that I'm a woman and I actually look, you know, much younger than what I, my age actually. And, and, you know, just people just underestimate you quite a lot and they just don't really give, give you the time of day. And, and, and then, then it's about time. Then it's about proving them wrong. Then it's about, yeah, you know, just, just watch me. And, and when people watch the, the evidence and the facts to speak for themselves and there's, yeah, there's, you know, slowly but surely, they quiet up and they just they just observe there's 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 nothing there's no more doubts to cast on you because because mm. you're doing it and 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 again you know it's 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 tough it is not not at all at least for me i mean i can only speak for myself it's not an easy ride not an easy ride but it's also rewarding when you when you go well. See, you know, there's something that I can add, and I can add a lot of value to to what scientists are doing, and I can help them commercialize their technologies, and and I can help um, bring their yeah. geniuses to the world. And 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 it takes, you know, it, it, it yeah, it takes um, some resilience to do that. I would say, in addition to a little bit of what knowledge. What keeps driving you to be resilient? I mean, you know. Are there times when you're just like, why am I having to not only work hard in a challenging job, but work hard at proving myself too? What what keeps you going? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I have this fantasy that goes on in my head from time to time when I go, oh, wouldn't it be lovely to just get a job as... um." store manager like i could i could i could manage a starbucks like you know and i I could actually help serve the coffee every morning like that would be lovely and that would be like so much calmer to what i do probably starbucks (laughs) managers going no it's not calm but yeah i get what you mean (laughs) no 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 i i really not no no disparaging comments to them but i'm just you know you know what i mean like where, where something is so you know, it's not as unknown mm. and as what I'm doing. What I'm saying is that, you know, where I am is there's so much uncertainty, and and uncertainty is something that unsettles mankind regardless of anything, right? So, you know, when 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 it's like a like a more you know like a safer, um, more you know, less unexpected place. That's what I that's what I mean. Um, 
but you know, I, 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 I guess, I guess that what I have seen in in some instances in my life is what I have witnessed, either on myself, on other, or, or on others, how the latest of the latest changing status quo has actually massively transformed someone's life. When someone someone goes like, I didn't think this was possible, and now it is. And now it is thanks to someone who who kept brave and who kept going at it and who really thr- really tried and didn't give up. And and I have seen that in, in, in many instances and I just and I just I just want to help with that because I, I think it can do it. I mean, I can give you a very particular example. Um, I have several, but, you know, there was one that marked me. Um, I don't know if you know about autoimmune diseases, but autoimmune diseases are, you know, very prevalent, more prevalent than people want to think. And they're really nasty. And they it's almost like a death sentence and it's a slow one. So anyone who has something like, for example, multiple sclerosis, it's, it's so tough, you know, to live a life and to adapt your life to something so crippling and so, you know, life changing in, in unfortunately, the not so positive way. Um, and so uh, there was a, there, I was, I was involved for several years in the, in bringing to the market the, um, you know, the first oral therapy. Um, again, I don't want to go into a lot of details, but before patients with multiple sclerosis would only be able to inject themselves and, and, and to get injections and get somewhat symptoma- symptomatic um, treatment on, on their very, very difficult life-changing condition. And then suddenly there was a, um, you know, a, a pill that would be taken orally instead of injected with less side effects and, and with, a, with a transformational effect on their disease, uh, which was unheard of before. And and I was, I was, I had the massive privilege to, to, to be privy to, to dealing with, you know, to facing some of these patients in different hospitals in, in, in the world, actually, and, and seeing how these kind of new, new therapies would change their lives and, and just interacting with them and understanding what, what that would mean to them and, and seeing it firsthand, you know, that, that, those kind of experiences have marked me so much. And, and I, and I've seen, you know, if, if they're, you know, the brave people that, you know, see the challenge, see the uphill battle, but do not give up and then try harder and harder for these, for these patients and this type of people that, that have a massive challenge ahead of them. And if you can help them, it's, it's, you know, mm. what, why my question to myself is what else am I here for? I'm, I'm here to help. And, and, and I, and I, if I can yeah. do that, even if it requires a lot of resilience, then, I should, you know, why wouldn't I? Yeah. What's the gender balance like? Oh, um, 99% men, 1% women. <laughs> right. I'm the only, yeah. I'm the only woman in, in the management and, team in, my, in the company I'm with. Wow. Okay. And so what's that actually like? I mean, are you aware of it? Um, have you? Yeah. And have you had to kind of develop certain skills, um, you know, to be able to cope in a male-dominated environment like that? Yeah, definitely. You, um, I've had to develop very thick skin, skin as thick as to the level I didn't think I could have uh, myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say, I mean, there are things that 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 that, that happen. Um, anything from background discrimination, gender discrimination, um, you know, just any kind of discrimination, bullying. These things are 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 just not unheard of, and they do take place, and they yeah. definitely are more, you know, unkind to to women rather than men. And I have been subject mm. to 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 several of those, and I don't think is something that anyone, you know, no matter how strong you can be and how, how much of a thick skin you can develop, no one should be should 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 be part of that. No one should be should receive any of these treatment. Yeah. And and um I guess I you know would I ha- do I have regrets about, you know, taking in some of these things that have have 
you know, come my way? Yes, I do. Um, do I understand better today, you know, how I would handle any of these things if they come my way again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do I feel like I can, I can, you know, make a change and, 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 and help protect uh, the next generation of women that come through in the same path as I, as I am um, coming through? Well, yeah, I, I would, I, I would love to think so. I don't, I don't want to be arrogant, but I would love to think that, that what I am, you know, the stance I am, I have and, 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 and the respect I'm, you know, commanding for myself after, after my, you know, my journey is seen in its different stages, you know, do I want that to support other women and make it safer for, for the, for the next women to come? I absolutely hope so. I really do. I really do. Uh, it's not easy. It's not okay. You know, I, I, you know, if I, and, and, and the men out there that have, you know, taken these, um, you know, approaches that are not okay. You know, they know it, they know it themselves. And, and, and sometimes it be it goes beyond, you know, employment law or, or, or anything. Really. Yeah. It really is a very, very complex subject because even if we were to just look at something you said earlier, where, you know, women either become very aggressive or they become basically doormats. Yeah. Um, I mean, what is the what is the golden mean? Because if you're not aggressive and, well, if you're not assertive and if you don't stand up for yourself, then you are treated like a doormat. So what what is the solution? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's... Um... It's it's not first of all it's not easy. Um, there is always a middle ground of, as you said, assertiveness. You have a passiveness, which is not okay, and I do not, um, you know, promote in any shape or form to be a doormat for any woman in this world. They should never be a doormat. Uh, but you also have the aggressive side, right? Uh, the, yeah, which is the other. Extreme. Yeah, exactly. You have the two extremes, and you have in the middle you have the pa- the, the the assertive side. I would say that learning to be assertive about about you know what what are your rights as a woman and and on any any field in any shape or form this is this is an art and I can tell you I mean I have been for 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 several you know several reasons I have I have gone you know I've been in therapy and I I've understood you know much better you know, what my role is in all of those situations. And, and um, I mean, the assertiveness, unfortunately, is not super easy. It's not such, it's not common sense. It doesn't come naturally to many women. Maybe to some it does. And, you know, kudos to those women that, that just have a, a very clear idea of what assertive, being assertive looks like. But at the same time, it, it's, it's much easier to go on the passive side or to or go to the aggressive side. I would suggest that 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 women need to help each other and and that mm-hmm. the more you're surrounded by, you know, business mentors or science mentors, it doesn't matter, but just mentors and coaches who who have been there, you know, collective wisdom. Collective wisdom is something not to be um, taken lightly. I mean, it's a very powerful thing. So there's a lot of d- depending on you know which 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 discipline you're 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 a part of in 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 STEM. Uh, there 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 is a network out there. Mm. Of, of but who are your mentors? Because if you're working with ninety nine percent men like who do you turn to for advice they are outside my mentors i mean first of all no one no one tells you hey 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 you know your mentor is this your 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 mm. your now you've been assigned a, a business coach you know th- that doesn't happen you have to look for them for yourself but that, that that's not different from men by the way it's not just about women anyone has to look for themselves what who who's going to help them there th- mine are outside of, of my circle Mine are outside and I have, I have, you know, and actually, you know, funny enough, I have women mentors and coaches and I have, I have, I have male mentors and coaches. It, it, it's not, it, it's not, you know, 
it's, it's not just about the gender. It's just about people who understand who have been in the same circles as you have been and, and, and people that, that, that really can support you and understand where you're coming from and what you're living through and what you're going through. And people that are sensitive enough, um, humble enough, and, and compassionate enough to really help uh, and, and understand and, and, and give you a word of advice. So it, it's really not about, you know, I only have to have women mentors and women coaches. That's not the case. But I do have amazing women who I have, you know, have crossed my path, thank, thankfully, and I, I've been able to ask them, you know, can you support me on this and on that? And and, and it's up to us, to, you know, us women in, 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 in this feels to to call them up and and, mm. and ask for the right help at the right time and um it can be transformational i can tell you it can be transformational it, it can be for at least for me it has been and i'm really grateful for 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 these people who have you know stood up for me and who have supported me across across my journey yeah have you ever come across um women that are as ambitious and as driven and as accomplished as you because often when we are looking for mentors we're kind of looking for people that we either aspire to be like or who are equal to us but you're such you sound like such a unique woman so highly accomplished where do you find someone that's on your level or is it not about that yeah um I guess what I what I look for when I'm looking for a mentor or a coach or a friend or a listening you know ear, uh, I just I it's not about comparing myself. It's just about it, it for me. It's about understanding my 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 weak spot at that moment and my weakness or my my struggle, my challenge. You know, really is a lot of self awareness, and 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 once I understand that, what's really going on for me? You know, where where is the challenge? Where is the trouble? Um, and 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 that that is that is an art in itself to understand that part. But but once I do, it, it's just about finding. Um, you know, really being being close to my network and and cherish it, and and finding someone who I believe can say something to that. Regardless of whether they're 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 similar to my, they have a similar background to mine or a similar challenge, I, it, it almost doesn't matter. It matters that they, you know, they they would understand it and they would, again, as I said before, they would they would be able to be empathetic, and 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 have similar um, experiences that they can relate to. And they can share with me. Um, and it could be someone who has, you know, has has gone through a lot of. Um, I don't know who has studied these 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 spaces and who understands the theory very well, or someone who has a lot of experience. Typical experience is better than the theory, and 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 it's yeah, it's 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 it, it's about that. And what I what I find is that really it goes this way for me practically. I accept my vulnerability. I I am aware of of what's going on for me, and I am not shy of expressing you know, the, 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 the not so fancy things that are happening to me. So if I, if I am super honest and open about those, I share them with the, you know, the people I trust that are around me. And typically that has translated into these people then putting, either helping me or putting me in touch with someone who they think can help me. And, and that has, it's 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 almost like a like a divine intervention that I have found. You know, as long as I'm vul, I'm I'm okay to be vulnerable. I'm okay to be open. I'm okay to express myself. Then there is always someone who goes, oh, you know, you should talk to so and so, and you should you should really reach out to these or let me put you in contact if you want to with this person, and I'm sure they can help you. And 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 you know sometimes I've been you know been put in touch with with someone like that, and I sit there and I I'm you know talking to these to these you know whoever I've been put put in touch with, and I just go like, how are you gonna even be able to help me? And and then I start talking and I just go like, okay, whatever, let's just trust. And I just and I just start talking, and then and immediately just suddenly it it it, it dawns on me. 
these people completely get me and they're going like, well, you know, when I found myself in a similar situation, this is what I did and this is what happened and da da da. And, and then suddenly new wisdom that you were not aware of comes to you. You, you really have to be you know, always very, very attentive to, to your network and very open to share what's really mm. happening with you. So that's mentors on a business front. Um, what about the other aspects of being a woman? Um, you know, motherhood, relationships, social, you know, how does that fit into your life? Because your job does sound very consuming. Yeah, um, it is very consuming. Um, I guess, um, yeah, mentors in 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 other in other ways. I... Well, not necessarily mentors in other ways, but like you know, you clearly uh, spend you've spent a significant portion of your life sort of building your career, becoming accomplished in your career. What about the other aspects of being a woman? Like, you know, do you want to explore? the other aspects of being a woman or or are you currently you know yeah um i mean definitely definitely um i guess that um one of the things i've learned in my life is that no extreme is is helpful and if you only vest yourself in work um then you know you you become really poor in, in in other aspects of life and and it's just you know yeah i mean i don't think i don't think just being successful at work um makes your life um a happy life <laughs> it just doesn't happen um i guess you know it, it's it, it's it's i would say it's a it's it's a it's a personal challenge i mean depending on on what's going on for you it 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 really depends on 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 that what 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 the right um approach is for me i um i really draw a lot of um inspiration let's call it that way and a lot of wisdom as well from from friends who i admire women friends who i admire i um I really, you know, even if I don't see them every weekend, um, it 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 really is um, an inspiration to me, and and I and I draw uh, what I can from 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 these people. Striking a work life balance is mm-hmm. not an easy thing. Um, it's um, it's it's a it's a conscious effort, and that conscious effort has you know requires requires definitely time, requires support. I I don't think I can do it by myself. And and it's not um it's not a it's not it's not it's not a you know an easy challenge. I mean, there there are challenges in 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 business and in in work and at work. There are challenges outside of of, mm. of of that as well. I think that you know understanding understanding your needs and 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 giving purposely time um to yourself to 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 be all aspects of who you are to to really to really express yourself in all aspects not just work is 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 a very important thing it's not something to be taken lightly and it's something that um for people like i am who are very driven and almost in a way you know workaholics <laughs> let's mm-hmm. call it that way um we have to consciously make an effort of of you know of 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 extending our lives out to other aspects and 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 that is you know i i don't have you know i i have i have a lot of inspiration from women some women that i've met throughout my life i have um i don't have um 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 a strong relationship at all with 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 um women in my family unfortunately i mean women in my family is you know it's not something where i can draw any you know, force or inspiration from, but, but I, I do, I, but, but I do, I, I have definitely met a lot of women who are really, really, really incredibly inspirational to me. And I just, and I just, you know, need to reach out to that and I need to, I need to be super conscious that, that I, yeah, that I can get them to, that, that I can reach out to them and, 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 and they can, and they can support me mm. in, in different aspects of life. 
again, it's, it's, there's no recipe. I don't think there's a recipe. I just think it's, again, it's awareness and, 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 and making sure that you, you're tapping onto um, the people that you know are there for you, but they're not there for you just, you know, without you reaching out, they're there for you and you need to reach out. When we started this podcast, uh, it sounded like your mum was incredibly inspirational. And um, so I would ask the question, you know, isn't your mum uh, one of your biggest inspirations, though? I think it marked me. I think my, my mother, um, you know, and my dad, both from, a, you know, with their scientific background, they marked um you know it had an influence in me for sure for sure and, and even more so that now that I'm an adult and I can understand better what was going on there um I I you know I unfortunately um you know by means of you know just life I do not have a, a good relationship with my mother and I don't have a a, 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 a close relationship with my mother either um with my father is i don't know it's um it's a bit different but it's 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 also not necessarily the closest relationship ever and i i you know i i i i draw negative inspiration from my mother and but i i i you know there's so many things about human human kindness that are you know are not there in what I saw in my mother and I never would want any I, I I don't want to emulate you know a lot of my own wiring is coming from you know things I have to learn from what my mother taught me from a scientific perspective though um you know I you know it's it, it it's just it was just very interesting to to observe how my parents behaved from a scientific perspective and that definitely marked me from a human perspective um, unfortunately, I do not have a, a support system mm. at all in my family. I just don't. Um, I just don't at all. Um, so it's um, it's um, yeah. it's an interesting topic for me. Well, it sounds like quite um, a sensitive area, um, uh, but I think you know what positivity can be drawn from what you said is that you know, it really set you on a path that made you extremely tenacious and uh, driven and as a result, very successful. So some good has come out of that. Um, and on sort of like a more sort of final note, like what does having it all mean to you? having it all <laughs> i don't have it all but i strive for a very happy balance where you know on the one side when it comes to the you know, professional side where i am able to be in a position where i like i said before where i'm applying every single ounce of my talents, whatever that may be, it doesn't matter, um, whatever I've been gifted with, given, to, to changing the status quo for the better, to supporting people, you know, get what they have never been able to get um, that will help them in, in having a you know, more fulfilled lives. And, and and I know very well what that means for me. And I know that one day I will have my own business and I will, I will, you know, apply, invest everything I've learned into one place. And, and hopefully, even, even if I make a difference only to a few lives, it doesn't matter. That's already more than enough. Um, yeah. So, you know, that, you know, that's that that for me would be mm. and will be having it all from a, from a professional perspective. From a personal perspective, it's a bit intertwined. I, I, I am not a fan of these, you know, personal life, professional life. I, I think for me anyways, they're intertwined. From a personal perspective, I, I you know, I just want to, I just strive to be this very honest woman who, you know, no matter, no, no makeup, no, no, you know, fronts or anything just you know whatever has happened for me throughout my life throughout these you know decades of life I, I just I just want to make sure that I 
that I use it and leverage it to 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 support anyone around me. I mean, support myself, of course, first of all, and and help myself to 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 be a more advanced um, and happy and fulfilled soul. I mean, I'm, and I and I mean it at the level of a so, uh, the level of soul, and and I. And I just, you know, would love to, to anyone who's around me to, to, to also be able to gain from anything I've learned. And um, my journey hasn't been easy. I have not had an easy life. Um, I've not had also an, a very easy career, but that, that may be, you know, what I chose for myself. And I know everything that I've, I've had probably at some point in life or before my life, I chose for myself. And, and, and what... There must be a purpose. I want. I want to be able to to give back, and I will. I want to be able to support. To, yeah, to 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 move the needle for people to advance. You know what can be done. Uh, people think you know what can be done is X, and I want to show people how, that we can do better than that. <laughs> you know, we can all together do better than that. So that's yeah, that's me. What an amazing note to end on. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing your truth, um, getting very honest, and uh, you've been an absolute inspiration and joy to have on this show. Thank you. Thank you. That's it from my STEM guest this week. Wow. I feel so moved by hearing my guest. Um, I feel that we haven't really got anywhere close to hearing about what she's been through in life. Um, but all her experiences, good and bad, seem to have positively influenced her um, to make her such a millennial woman. Like, wow, talk about pioneering and trailblazing. As always, I'm utterly inspired and actually quite emotional after hearing her story. Thank you so much for listening this week. Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the show and catch you next week on Silence.